Hey guys, it's Mark here. Today with a new Frost Mage guide for patch 9.1. There hasn't been any changes playstyle wise, literally zero balance changes, so I decided that I won't repeat the same content since I'm super happy with my 9.0.5 Frost Mage guide. That's why I won't talk about the ordinary talents and DPS rotation. If you're interested in it, you can find more about that in my older video linked in the description. Even though the video is now a few months old, nothing changed. So in today's video I will focus on things that had a change or two and those are conduits, stats, domination sockets and lastly trinkets. So let's get started. First topic is the conduits. We will mainly play frost mages paired with Venter Covenant. And with the new soulbind abilities, the best one for us is definitely Nadja. For solo targets, Icy Propulsion is going to be our first potency conduit. And then we definitely want to take Dauntless Duelist Soulbind ability instead of second potency conduit. And at Renown level 43, we are going to get another potency slot, perfect for Ice Bite. When we're talking about AoE situations, Somatic Plus, I prefer to run Unrelenting Cold instead of Dauntless Duelist for the biggest damage output. This basically means that you won't need to waste any conduit energy for any of the situations, which is great. Stats. I always get asked about stats. What are the best ones? Can I show my stats? Etc. So I will repeat this topic. Our stat priority is intellect. So usually bigger item level will mean bigger damage. But if you have the same item level items, you should aim to get haste and critical. Critical is super good for frost mages until we reach the soft cap of 33.34% critical strike chance or 23.34% critical strike chance if you're doing focus magic trade. And when you reach that soft cap, the value of critical strike chance will fall significantly for us and preferably you won't go over that soft cap. But there are more things with stats than just having critical and haste. The more haste you got, Versatility and mastery will increase in value, so really I will advise you like I do in every video to use raid bot simulations to determine which is the best item for you and to determine your stat weights. Personally for the raid, I go with the normal settings of patchwork 5 minute fight on one target and it will be good for majority of the raid. You can always min max your gear for every fight, but you don't really have to. And for mythic plus situations, I want to have a decent solo target damage paired with excellent AoE. It also will depend on a week to week. So I will sim myself again on patchwork fight for about 30 seconds to 1 minute, for 2 to 6 targets depending on the dungeon and its level. Plus I will sometimes check multiple scenarios. And with all the info I'll somehow scramble my gear. But that's pretty much it about the stats. Simulations will tell you everything. Domination Sockets This is a new addition to the game and will have 5 domination slots from gear which drops in the raid. These gems are somewhat of set items and if you put all 3 sockets of the same type in, you will get a set bonus. Currently I prefer the frost set bonus the most, but that's still a subject to change. You guys shouldn't worry too much about these, the situation is very simple. We will be running 3 DPS sockets, so 1 Unholy, 1 Blood and 1 Frost DPS socket, with 2 finesse sockets of the same type, depending on which one is going to be the best. Lastly, we can get sockets on helm, chest, shoulders, bracers and belt. So bad news for the people who made their legendary powers on one of these slots, including me. They will probably need to recreate the legendary on a different slot. Trinkets. We'll have to say goodbye to very good trinkets from this raid, Cliff of Assimilation and Cabalus Hymnal. But we will get some sweet new trinkets. Personally, I really love Unbound Changeling on the Frost Mage, so that one is always going to be viable. And there is a lot of very good raid trinkets. I did quite a bit of testing on PTR and here are my findings so far. Tome of Monstrous Constructions is a decent trinket, but it will be overshadowed by Evan Soul Wise, a trinket which is a platinum copy of Glyph of Assimilation. In every test, Wise did more damage even if the target was always at 100% HP. 
Shadowed Orb of Torment is extremely underpowered for Frost Mages, so let's just skip that one. Titanic Ocular Gland is a super good stat trinket as long as you're above 50% HP, which is the big majority of the fight. So I believe that this trinket is going to be decent. It might not be the best one for progression, but when some of the bosses are on farm, it might be super good. Lastly, we got a Forbidden Necromatic Tome, which is another cool trinket, but I thought it's going to be better. I expected that I will be able to maintain 100% uptime of this buff with 3 stacks. But in my testing, I couldn't refresh the duration of the buff once you get the 3 stacks, which is sad. But overall, sometimes you will get unlucky and the buff is going to drop even without stacking to 3 stacks. This trinket is also super similar to Kabbalist Hymnal and I assume that it will be super good. Also the trinket can rise a dead person in a skeleton form, something like the early DK Ghoul Resurrection. So don't use it. The skeleton form lasts for 30 seconds and in those 30 seconds the player can pump only 20k additional damage. In my testing I was getting the best numbers from Ebon Soul Wise in combination with either Titanic Ocular Gland or Forbidden Necromantic Tome. So I'm interested to see what will the simulation say. And that's it for this video, I hope you guys liked the shorter update of a guide video, if you didn't let me know in the comments. I'm planning to do the same update for Kyrian Arcane and Venter Arcane Mages. And I will do a proper guide for Fire Mages since they actually received changes. I hope that you will leave a like on the video and that you will check out my Twitch and Patreon page. And as always, until next time, take care.